In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Google Earth uh, Engine app to look through each of the Sentinel images and collate the best images and save them for subsequent processing to create them into composite uh, images that we can then digitize later on. So here I'm logged into the Google Earth Engine and I've got a particular repo a repository of code which has the main tools um, for processing of the Sentinel images. The first one is the one that we use to step through all of the Sentinel images and then select the best ones. And that's what we'll be going through in this video. The results of that will then be copied into this one where we'll create a composite image from. In this particular script, the first bit is just general configuration, the date range, that we're going to search through. Um, often these parameters usually don't need to be changed. The parameter that we change each time we do a run is which particular scene that we're looking at from the map. Now we've got descriptions here, um, but if we bring up a map, we can see each of the reefs with the rough outlines and the dots represent each of those scenes that we're processing and the codes that each tile from Sentinel corresponds to. So as we process each scene, which is like about 100 kilometers by 100 kilometers, we then pick out the best images and process them one scene at a time. So as we go through, we comment out ones that we've done already, we move to the next one, we save that and then run the script. Now the script you want to, it automatically goes to the right place um, in the Coral Sea, which is handy. And then in the console, you'll see a list of all the, um, the actual scene names themselves. You can see there's 45 images here and then to view the actual uh, name of that image, it's here. So we actually need the full, to be able to copy the full name. So we need to have enough room. Let's see if we can, to get the full lot. Now this particular scene here is pretty good. There's virtually no clouds. There's only a few clouds over the actual reef areas. So I would class that scene as good. And then we record it in Notepad++. And then we can move to the next image. Now, most of the time to actually do this process is really waiting for the Google Earth Engine to render the next image. Um, so as soon as you've made a decision about whether to keep that image or to classify it, then you can move to the next one. So here, for example, there's a lot of little scattered clouds. Um, we pretty much know there's no reefs in this area. So what's most important is the areas where there is reef features. This one would, oh, it's almost a maybe, but we'll see if we get better images than that. Now you see this little line here that represents where it's up to. Now this scene here, it looks really pale. That's because we're looking at the sun glint um, that hasn't been corrected. Basically the sun glint correction only works up to a certain threshold and then basically it does nothing. So if it's above the threshold of correction, it considers that, oh, this must be land. And so I won't apply sun glint correction. And so you end up with a really pale image. Pretty much any image that has any significant sun glint, we pretty much exclude it from the search so we can move on. Now our aim is to create two sets of images, the best images for our reference imagery, and then a second set of image which has all the rest of the images that are relatively okay. And more scenes. Now often when you start, it's hard to say how many good scenes you're going to actually get. 
So you can see here, this one's got half filled with sun glint and half not with sun glint. That means that the sun glint was, this is the boundary where it just couldn't correct anymore. That gets excluded because there's too much sun glint. We're aiming for about four to eight images per final image that we're going to produce. And it takes somewhere between 15 to, well, probably half an hour to process each scene. Given that we know that we're getting a lot of sun glint scenes, it might be good actually collecting some of these somewhat average images and classify putting them in the maybe category. So in this case, we'll copy and paste this. By filing all the images which are sort of okay into the maybe, then we build up a big list of them. And if there's enough of them, then the statistical combination of those images will result in an okay image. Basically, if you're trying to get rid of clouds, you've got to have probably like eight to 10 images before the uh, corrections are going to work really well. And this one's a pretty good one. So I'm going to move on to the next image so that Google is processing while I'm working out what I'm going to classify that as. I think I'll still call that one okay because there was clouds over where the reef is. The same in this case, that's an okay image. Now, if we end up collecting enough good and okay images, another okay one, then we will, we won't actually need to use any of the maybe images. But when we start, it's impossible to know. In this particular quick run of the data set that I'm working on, I'm producing a draft version. Um, I'm not going through all the imagery. I'm only going through just over half the imagery. Um, just to save on time. But when you go through it or some when, when we go through it in detail, then we'll look very carefully at each image, possibly more so than what I'm looking at now. So I'm just going to pause the video until I collect a few more images and then I'll come back. Okay, so I've gone through a few more images and I've come across this image here, which you can see has virtually no clouds whatsoever. Um, I would classify these pretty much when there's no clouds, that gets an excellent rating um, because so if you have an excellent rating on the images, you don't need as many images to create a good image. So in this case, it looks like we might have for our first reference image, these images here, and then for our second image, these images here. Pretty much if you've got images which are just okay and maybe, you probably want more like eight images um, to, in, to get rid of enough of the clouds. Um, if you've got an excellent image, then you could probably get away with just a couple of excellent images. Each time you add a few more, you're getting a little bit better statistical power to lower the noise in the image, which will allow us to see a little bit deeper. Um, as soon as you have some clouds, even though they get masked out, because the water is a slightly different color in each image, you get like little holes where the cloud is, where it's been cut out and you can see the water that's underneath. But because it's a slightly different color, it looks like an artifact in the image. It's only when you get enough images, ideally more like 20, 30 images, that the averages 
all come out very very close to this you know the effect of the clouds sort of averages out but when we've only got like four or five images then each um each hole produced by a cloud produces a reasonably large anomaly in the image Okay, I'm going to pause again and um, collect a few more images. Okay, I'm just probably going to finish up here. I haven't gone through all the images, but we've probably got a reasonable set um, here. We've processed uh, 33 of 45 images, and now the job is to turn this list into a list that's suitable to put into this script over here. Now if we have a look at the format, you can see that each category has two sections of code. The top one corresponds to the reference one images, they're the, good, the best images, and then there's a section for reference two images. So we get basically two copies, or sorry, yeah, two images per scene. The ones with the best images and the ones with the okay images and then we can use those to compare uh, with each other and then each section there's each one corresponding to one scene or one tile of sentinel imagery and then these are in order of going north to south left to right um, now at the moment this is the list of the draft ones um, and so these will be redone but with a little bit more care and attention so we can see here we want to put in how many images we did and we're going to remove that now here we want this format to match up like this right so here we're going to use some of the features in um, Notepad++ where you can actually select multiple rows at once using the Alt key. So if you hold the Alt key down and then select multiple rows, you get a multiple row cursor. You can see it's across two lines. And now if I hit Tab Tab, it does both of them at the same time and then a and then a quote and I can do the same at the end I'm just gonna make this window bigger hold the alt key down select the two rows and then I can type in both rows at once same with the good Hold the Alt key down, select all the rows, tab, tab, quote, Alt key, select multiple rows, quote, comma. Actually, I do need this comma. Now, this is the block of code that then goes in this first section here. Now, we're going to repeat. Now, the question is, we've got a reasonable number of OK images and maybe we won't use this single maybe the problem is if you add an image with fine clouds that are uncorrected it can make the image worse so generally if you're going to use maybe images you want to actually use a lot of them um, and so in this case I'm just going to just use the okay images to create the second reference image Now when we do it this way you'll see that we've got um, this comma on the end because I added it to all rows. Technically speaking in JavaScript which this is written in the last row shouldn't have a comma on it. And we want to make sure we also record what the rating or the quality of the images were. And we'll keep and we'll also keep a record of the maybe images 
even though we've not actually used them them at the moment. Okay. Now, yep, and that's basically it. Um, if we want to actually look at the composite image that we've created, then we need to change this to be true and this to true. So this first parameter is, should it generate a display version of it? So it'll come up in the menu of our layers to display. And the second parameter is on whether it should generate an export to Google Drive. Now we'll go through that in a separate video. But basically this is the process of sequentially going through each of the scenes, collecting the images, which are the basically roughly ranking them in order of quality. And then once we've ranked them, once we get to the end, working out which are the best ones, putting those into the first image, and then using the next set of pretty good images that are available into the second set of reference images. Um, and that's about it. All right. Thank you.